So, we have come to our third keynote speech, and it is with great pleasure that I would like to introduce Leipa Mladenovic, a feminist counselor working with women, violence survivors, and a famous lesbian activist. <laughs> Somebody who has, for so many years, um, uh, so she, she brings uh, uh, our attention to the post-Yugoslav uh, space and because she's a person who has for so many years uh, been all over this space and worked on constructing these lesbian nests that she will be talking about and uh, I understand them as, as moments of uh, activists and interpersonal connections and moments of beauty and moments of encouragement for So, um, 
So, uh, so some uh, uh, feminist theoreticians believe that socialist communist control of private life was a major reason for the silence of lesbians and gays, but most of the lesbian and gay thinkers say that in most political systems it was similar, except uh, some uh, few West European countries. And also we saw in the um, as a feminist lesbian director, Maria Takac showed in her documentary <coughs> film Secret Years, the testimonies of women loving women in state socialist Hungary. Absolute silence of society was masking the hatred against us, uh, women who were beginning to love women more than just friendly. Uh, one of the first, uh, many, but one of the good descriptions of this uh, Realization's total silence it was written in uh, 76 in a historic first paragraph by Jonathan Katz in his edited book, uh, Gay American History of Lesbian and Gay Men in the US. So there is a citation. We have been the silent minority, the silenced minority, invisible women, invisible men. The alleged enormity of our sin justified the denial of our existence, even our physical destruction. destruction. Our crime was not only against society, not only against humanity, but against nature, and we were taken as outlaws against the universe. Not having an idea of the knowledge given to in this paragraph, by 1988, I fell in love with a woman. I lost my mind <laughs> and realized <laughs> that this is the feeling I desire. Like many women falling in love with women in the world in those years, I did not know any friend who would tell me of similar experience. And I thought I would take, um, just be silent about this and not talk to anybody and solve the problem. Um, in the beginning, in Belgrade, in those years, uh, I was a feminist, and we met in the feminist group, Women in Society, which was a sister group with the one with the same name as I. And uh, very soon I found out that, in fact, in my group, in the same group, there are other comrades holding the same love secret. But these were years of secrecy, in which we lesbian took the role of deliberate liars in order to survive. So there is a citation of a Bridge. A pen must write underground, underwater, so be it. I really love this citation. I'm, I'm going to repeat it. <laughs> a pen must write under, underground, underwater, so be it. In the 80s, I was in my 30s and was politically active in the International Network of Alternatives to Psychiatry. I hitchhiked from one meeting to the other in different cities of West Europe. At that time, a women's movement was flourishing a new phenomenon in history, women's bookstores. These were women's handmade shops for books and coffee, where it was a feminist must to go in this bookstores in Amsterdam, Frankfurt, Roma, Athena, and so on. I felt these spaces were charming and exactly how I love them to be, with lazy cats zooming around, tampons hanging in the bathroom, and lesbians on the front desks. <laughs> these bookstores were symbolically shop windows with big news for us from East, East Europe. The women's movement has already invented lesbians who are proud to be so and we can see them there. I started to read books by feminist lesbians and to feed myself. These books were road signs for us loving women, even more they were maps for life. And there is another station. With each touch of you, I am fresh breath. You take me love, fill me with you, and I become pregnant with love, give birth to revolution. I will come to my sisters, not dutiful, I will come strong. This is Beth Parker, she's a black US feminist lesbian. 
and not alive. Uh, in December in uh, 1987, the feminist from the feminist group Lilith in Slovenia decided to invite feminists from Croatia, Slovenia, and Serbia to the first Yugoslav feminist meeting. About 40 yet to be activists gathered in long discussions in Ljubljana. It was the first seminar event on which violence against women was named as an urgent issue, and lesbians were named out loud in the program in the title Lesbian Literature and Trinidad Language. Um, and it was really a first uh, event, a public event, where, where the word lesbian was used, uh, one of the first, you know, I think you can never say each one, you know, but it's one that was in itself. But uh, at the same time, to the conference, Juliana, uh, I arrived with my lover from Italy, and she decided to pay hotel for two nights. It was the first time for her and for me to enter a hotel and ask for the room for two. We wanted the so-called French bed, but how to ask this and how to ask anything in a hotel. I was embarrassed and thought it is easier for my lover to do it because she's foreigner. But she was traveling, and she thought it is easier for me to do it because this is my country. <laughs> I was 33, and I have never before slept in a hotel. In socialist time, hotels were considered bourgeois items, and the workers were not meant to go there. Throughout my childhood time, we slept in relatives of private rooms on the holidays, and, and I did not know how to ask for a room for two standing near my lover. And I was thinking uh, the only images I could think of <coughs> to help me were those of Hollywood movies. Vanessa at grave in her full dignified style, walking into a hotel lobby and asking simply for a hotel room. <laughs> but I did not have her class not her heterostatus, not her English accent. My database in my mind did not know of any model of two lesbians and three held together. What will they ask me? They will see everything on my face. What will they see on my face? The fear in the body was burning me. My lar was sweating. And there is another situation. For those of us who were imprinted with fear, of the Lord to help me. The two middle-aged hoteliers, the woman and the man in this hotel, I still remember them, never said anything. What happened next? In the room on the second floor of the hotel, two of us are finally alone. We locked the door twice. We closed the curtains, we lighted cigarettes, tried to find a drink and sitting quite apart from each other. <laughs> From Ben Parker. Even in our worst times, some part of us finds each other. Uh, 
Whatever we do together is pure invention. The maps they gave us were out of date by years. Um, so we go back to the conference. Remember, we are still on the first feminist conference in Milan, and so we're still there. The conference was successful and historic in many ways. The issues were named, the plans were made. The last day we made the conference conclusions, we were informed of a list of themes we shall work on violence against women, women in employment, in politics, in healthcare. And there was a line about opening lesbian groups in every city in the country. The document meant we promised to each other what shall we work on to change society in a better place for women. Many of us from that night have carried out promises. In that year, the first lesbian group was formed in Slovenia, LL, Lilith Lesbians. After that, in 89 and 90, feminists, lesbians in Zagreb to form an initiative. Lesbians in Belgrade started a lesbian discussion inside of the feminist group and in the society. So I'm now summarizing 80s multiple other communities on account. I was in different social movements that created deep passion and made for different world with new liberties taken together. <coughs> so the first one was a um, movement of Italian democratic psychiatry that opposed in total classic notion of psychiatry, which mainly looked at institutions of psychiatry as a system of violence against mental others and the notion of normality as invention of those of power to keep their power and control mental others. I was therefore other to both the systems, classic psychology, where I studied for many years, and psychiatry. Then, the Yugoslav feminist movement made me a feminist who watches the world as a place of male violence, needs and demands, not made for women. Every invention of society became visible in my eyes in its patriarchal roots and made me feel a sign. The lesbian community in those years gave me another light to which the world I saw as a place of compulsive heterosexuality where I do not belong anymore. With this knowledge, I was already other to my family. So, and I will give you another citation about the family. Uh, first one is from Beth Parker. I can no longer claim, I can no longer claim a mother of flesh, a father of bones. I, woman, must be the child of myself. That's Beth Parker. There is another one from Mother Lord. I have no sister, no mother, no children, only a great tideless ocean of moonlit women. But, in the 80s, in the streets of my town, nothing of my multiple other identities were to be recognized. I was spotted, mainly as a young girl, a possible target of sexual harassment for which I needed to be ready for. So I often walked with a knife in my pocket, sometimes with screwdriver, or later I got a real tear gas spray. All of which gave me, gave me some courage, but did not always help me against men hatred or women. Now we go to the year 90. There is a very interesting phenomenon in Yugoslavia. It's the year of 1990. It's only that that year because uh, the if, if you remember the many of you remember the Berlin Wall fell in November '89. So then, so some openings started, and then before the war started, there was really um, many initiatives, and feminists were already working on hotlines for battered women in Zagreb, Belgrade, and Ljubljana, and feminists started some accounts in Slovenia. Others were discussing in politics. There were women's groups formed. There were women's lobby in Zagreb and Ljubljana. In Belgrade, they even thought they were going to make a, a, a women's political party. So it was lots of things. Uh, 
families were uh, almost out on the street, even though we were never on the street with some petition. <coughs> so, so it was a, a really um, um, a, a very active year. And also in Belgrade, lesbians and gays, few lesbians and more gays started to meet in, in, uh, in what we afterwards called Arcadia. So that was all in 1990. Uh, but in 91, the war broke up. We had to stop in the sort of feminist encounters. Nationalism swept into the streets, entered into families and institutions like a typhoon. And conflict survived among friends, and, well, as well as families and feminist groups. The news announced the first man killed out in the front. And, um, uh, and from 91 to 99, um, there were about uh, 125,000 killed um, people in the country that was called Yugoslavia. Many people in England, everybody has their own accounts, but when the peace activists said everything. Uh, anti war centers opened in Belgrade and Zagreb, and feminists in Belgrade. Uh, founded Women in Black Against War to take responsibility in face of Serbian criminal regime. And my life changed completely. I was a feminist lesbian in the anti-war movement. I became a black protesting against Serbian totalitarian regime. This movement of Women in Black gave me strength to survive the 90s in Belgrade. I would uh, dress in black every Wednesday in the morning and you know, I didn't like my color at all, but uh, the dressing the white in that context uh, uh, gave me uh, strength because I was thinking, uh, well, you know, if, if I was angry at, at Serbian regime, so you know, by 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 dressing uh, this particular color and knowing that at a certain time in the day I will be out in the uh, in a public place, uh, um, it really made me also angry in in. in so, but once we were on the on the republic place, um, um, many times we were uh, considered as a paid prostitutes of Croatian and Bosnian leaders. Uh, I started to organize support of women sexually abused in war and women refugees, and we founded the Autonomous Women Center Against Sexual Violence in the United So the victims of war became the priority of my counseling work. And then the victims of war came the ethics of victimhood. And I will cite Elisa Helms, who just left. The, the claim of victimhood is ultimately not about position of suffering of actual things, <coughs> but about moral purity and innocence. And so moral purity must be absolute. There is a construction about victims, which is moral purity, which came with women I was working with. So I was faced with this new phenomenon of moral purity and me being lesbian as totally immoral. So I had to uh, put these two together uh, in my own body. Um, and remember what the, what the first citation said that we lesbians and gay were taken as immoral or moral, I say, against nature an outlook against the universe. So um, I didn't know how to put these two together, but um, I will uh, give some citations later. Uh, so before I give some citation about this particular issue, um, I, will, I can say that nationalism and war intensified my feelings of not belonging in the state I had such of. And being part of a, now a new moment I was in, the anti-war moment. 
So um, the citation is uh, really three paragraphs. I didn't want to write it again because I've already written it. It's uh, from from uh, from uh, my uh, text I wrote uh, during the 90s. Uh, the first title was not so timely slightly and during the war time, and then we also changed with the title. But this is about this uh, multiple others uh, thing. So this is my text that I'm citing. Many evenings after, and it's about 90s now, we are in the 90s. Many evenings after the hard work of counseling women survivors of war and violence in the Autonomous Women's Center, I would walk home, sometimes crying, and then dropping by the Center of Anti-War Action for an update on latest news on the war front from Croatia or Bosnia and Herzegovina. Women activists were working until late at night there with great passion and dedication. But no, not about lesbians now, let's not spoil the cause. It was something that was unsaid among us. At the same time, in our feminist group, every time we tried to talk about war, activists reacted differently and it seemed that everything separated us and that we really can't talk about. Nationalism, war, and pacifism. Each thing was so crucial to our individual feelings that it was almost impossible to talk about them. Was I Serbian only because I had a Serbian name? Was I still Yugoslav? As I used to say by myself, but there is no Yugoslavia anymore. And you know that now considered traitors. Another time. I would write solidarity letters to unknown women inside Iowa from Belgrade. <coughs> <coughs> who lived under the siege, thinking whether one day, you know, we had the initiative in our Thomas Women's Center to send packages to women in Sarajevo. We had uh, received from anti-war center the list of the women and their addresses, and we did not know them. But somebody collected uh, these names and addresses, so we were uh, making packages and writing nice letters to the women we don't know and then sending this to the humanitarian aid. Uh, uh, so I would write solidarity letters to an unknown woman in Sarajevo who lived under the siege, thinking whether one day she would be embarrassed if she saw the lesbian who wrote her letters in front of her door. Would she be disappointed with me? Would she regret that she ever received words of friendship from a lesbian? Many times this worry would catch me so strongly that I would shake. Why was it always so difficult to say that some humanitarian aid came from lesbians? Some said it was not important, but from what hypothesis, heteronormative or whichever this comes from? I was split, and in each context I only had one side of my face, and usually only in my flat or in my room, I felt at ease, but in my room, in my room, and I had a flat of my own. I remember I was in chaos and in dilemma in that same room. At times, it would be happening that I would be making love to a woman and the transistor radio would announce the latest news from the front line. The only news to listen to in those times about war were broadcasts from Prague or London and Paris. I would be in bed and not know what I should do. Should I get up from the warm bed, turn off the radio and continue our pleasure? I'm a lesbian, I'm a Serbian name, how can I turn off the news? Human beings, my neighbors, are being slaughtered in my name, and I must know about that. But if I do not turn off the radio, there is no more love making today, only my deep sadness and terrible news from the war front. In that case, I would light another cigarette in bed and make another coffee for both of us. Do I show respect to the dead by not turning off the radio? Is lesbian love making in that very moment inappropriate? And why? I was torn by these feelings, these contradictions. My body was hurting. And 
that I'm publication and I have just a I mean, yeah. um, so I just want to say yes, I'm concerned how I'm really concerned how political patriarchal ideology cut through our love making, through our body and our love making how cannot be otherwise if private political it's all there in that as well. Um, and yes, I'm activist because our movements are making safe spaces not only for our human rights, but for our emotions as well. And I want to finish uh, with this uh, citation of Adrian Rich, another one. The future can only be made by human beings who keep each other for. <laughs> <laughs>
told us that if there was somebody uh, uh, who, who, some man who would tell them, listen, I'm sorry as a man that men have done violence to you when, uh, when you were young, that is, could have helped her. It's never talk, this is never, this is not an issue we're talking about, like male violence against women, incest, and so on. And this also brings in many more questions how I take responsibility in the face of Roma people or racism, etc. So this is one that I think that, uh, that for me the war will never be over because it lives in people's lives in everywhere, in the places where it was. That's one thing. Second uh, your question is very important. And this is when I was thinking about the title multiple others, you know, in, uh, um, how uh, how my um, uh, how I was uh, uh, made in uh, in in the identity of other is to the movement. I'm talking about myself. So movement on on in one way gives you enormous uh, strength, hope, power, uh, joy, um, uh, and um, to survive in in in, in the context, which is what. So uh, really, women in black against war and peace movement did not stop the war. So, but it gave us really, um, it gave me and, and many of us uh, the energy to survive, uh, to live in in that regime, you know, in, in that regime. Uh, 